Hi, my name's Steve, and I'll be the host of today's Hangout. Joining us again is Charlie Seifer, an air filtration expert with Campbell USA, the global leader in clean air solutions, to talk about HEPA filters. Hi, Charlie. How are you today? Oh, fantastic. And, and boy, do we have a nice subject today. Uh, it's one of the most frequently received phone calls that I, that I get with uh, people that have questions about HEPA filters. So this will be a fun session for us today. I'm looking forward to it. You know, and I agree with that. Uh, I see the term HEPA used in all sorts of places, on the web, in sales literature, even in retail locations, and, and they talk about HEPA filters in your car. Uh, what exactly is a HEPA filter? Well, the original HEPA filter was developed in the late 1940s and 1950s to remove the contaminants associated with nuclear waste or, or building the atomic bomb. Uh, the original name for a HEPA filter was High Efficiency Particulate Arrester, and over the years that name has morphed into High Efficiency Particulate Air, and then the word filter following it. Unfortunately, the term is uh, kind of misused, uh, you know, by, by marketing people and, and uh, things that you might see on the retail shelf, because there is an actual definition of a HEPA filter that has been developed by a couple of engineering societies. And that definition is that a true HEPA filter has a 99.97% efficiency on particles 0.3 microns in size. Now, a 0.3 micron size particle is extremely small, 1 300th of the diameter of a human hair. Uh, normally, we're not really concerned about taking that small particle out of, an air, out of the air uh, because it's not really causing danger to ourselves. So when we talk about things like allergies and, and so on, uh, we're, we're looking at particles that are 5 to 15 microns in size. But unfortunately, in this world, people have a, a habit of, of misusing things in order to promote something that they shouldn't be doing. Uh, true HEPA filters are primarily used in medical facilities uh, and some manufacturing that hopefully we'll talk about a little, a little bit later. Right, well, that, that's great. That leads us right in. So where are they used predominantly? Well, probably the most common application for a HEPA filter is the semiconductor industry. Uh, as a matter of fact, Canfil was the one that purchased the rights to manufacturing the HEPA filters, which that's why we use the term absolute, because the original, uh, the original name for a HEPA filter was the absolute filter. And the mentality was that it was absolute, that it would remove every particle from the air. Uh, and that, that is actually a registered trademark of Canfil, but the generic term is actually HEPA filter. Uh, the semiconductor, for the first 10 or 15 years, there was actually no use for these beyond, you know, where we were manufacturing atomic bombs and that type of thing, so there was no commercial market. But then in the 1960s and 1970s, we came out with that little transistor radio, that 9-volt transistor radio, and the semiconductor industry just bludgeoned. IBM became a big thing and so on. Well, the truth of it is, is we wouldn't even have the watch on our wrist if it wasn't for HEPA filters because a very small particle, a half micron size particle that gets on a chip makes it so that chip is not usable. So even in today's world, we wouldn't have CD players, we wouldn't have LCD TVs, uh, the watch on our wrist, the radio in our car, all those things would not be possible if it were not for the use of HEPA filters in semiconductor manufacturing. The other place that HEPA filters are primarily used is in the manufacture of pharmaceutical. Uh, they don't have to have that level of clean space, but you can imagine that you want uh, your pharmaceuticals that you're going to be ingested, uh, you want them made in the cleanest environment possible, and of course all the pharmaceutical manufacturers try to do that. Uh, the third major place that HEPA filters are used are in medical facilities. Uh, if you go into an operating suite, typically the whole ceiling is HEPA filters. If you're in an intensive care unit and you look above the bed, typically there's a grill and it has a HEPA filter behind it. Uh, burn units would be another example because those people are very susceptible to infection and you want the cleanest air possible. So those are primarily the three main applications. And there are some unusual ones. There are some beer that requires HEPA filters. Mushroom factories uh, require some HEPA filters, even some dairies. Uh, so there are some other applications out there, but the primary three were semiconductor, pharmaceutical, and hospitals. Right. Do they remove odors, and are they helpful for people with allergies? 
Well, that's, that's where some of the confusion comes in. In the real world, Campbell would like to have the best filters applied every place. Uh, you know, so I'd love to have a HEPA filter in my house. Unfortunately, it's not realistic. A HEPA filter has so much resistance to airflow that it's almost like a pane of glass. And if you can imagine the fan that is in these systems and the additional strength that's required to move air through the filter, uh, it's, an, it's an additional expense that usually people are not willing to forego in order to use that level of filtration. Uh, the other thing is you always select the filter based upon the size of the offending contaminant. And normally we don't have to remove particles down to that 0.3 micron size level. We can remove them in the 1 to 5 to 10 to 15 micron size level and still maintain a healthy environment. There's also some confusion. People think that HEPA filters remove odors. That's absolutely untrue. Uh, in order to remove odors, you have to get out, down into the millimicron size, and HEPA filters just have no efficiency down there. The only way to remove odors from the airstream is to use something that has a kind of a sponge effect on gaseous contaminants, and that's something like carbon or uh, a granular type thing that has to be added to the system, where it actually absorbs the odors in the same way that a sponge would absorb water. Uh, so again, HEPA filters uh, typically are, are very difficult to use in residential or retail applications, and of course they don't remove odors. Right. Uh, any, any help with allergies, though? Uh, you know, again, optimally, uh, if we wanted to remove everything from the airstream, that would be the best thing for us. But most of us that have allergies, we're allergic to uh, items that are extremely large, 5 to 15 microns in size. A uh, HEPA would be extreme overkill in that case. Uh, that's one problem in the industry where, like, air cleaners are used, portable air cleaners. Uh, there's a lot of misnaming of the type of filters that are used in that industry. They don't really fit the definition of a true HEPA filter, such as the ones used in hospital or industry. They just don't have that high level of efficiencies. In many cases, they do the job because they remove those larger particles that we have, we have allergic reactions to. Uh, but normally they're not HEPA filters. Okay, so based on your comments, I guess you wouldn't really recommend installing a HEPA filter in my local HVAC system. Well, as I said, the, uh, you know, we'd love to see the best filters used in every location to protect the environment for all of us, but unfortunately it's not realistic. Uh, some people have done it, and uh, I mean, because they have some very unusual circumstances that get down into that submicron range size, but that would be like one out of 10,000 people. But they require extensive modifications to their HVAC or their furnace or their air conditioning system. And they have to put in a larger fan. That sometimes they have to enlarge the ductwork and they have to do all sorts of things. Uh, I probably get more calls in relation to HEPA filters and asking technical advice and that type of thing than I do anything else. And in a lot of cases, they want to put HEPA filters in retail spaces, even schools. And then I have to work them backwards and, and talk to them about what the actual offending contaminants are and letting them know that they need the, to choose the proper filter for the offending contaminants and not just choose a HEPA because they think that that's going to solve their problem. In many cases, even something like a, a regular pleated filter can be installed in a residential system and handle the, uh, the the most common allergies that people have. Great. So, so where can our listeners learn more about Campbell and their array of HEPA filters? Well, Campbell has a lot of technical literature. Uh, oh, by the way, another unusual location that HEPA filters are used are shooting ranges because of the lead. Uh, but that's just a, an example of some of the the uh, technical brochures we have available. We actually have a brochure on installing HEPA filters in shooting ranges. But we've got five or six pieces in there that uh, give the end user, from pharmaceutical to hospital to homeowner, some idea of what a HEPA filter is actually about. And they're, they're four to eight pages long, depending upon which brochure you choose. And for the most part, for the, for the end user, it, it lets them know everything that they've ever wanted to know about a HEPA filter. For the most part, if you're actually going to apply these in any type of application, you want to talk to your filtration expert to make sure you're doing things properly. Right. So where can they find these uh, product brochures and what have you? Are they online? Well, like everything else, you've hit it right on the button, Steve. The, uh, the best place to find information is online. 
But the easiest way is to go right directly to our website at www.campfield.us or airfilters.campfield.us and uh, basically look for the little icon in the upper right corner that says file archive or use the menu on the left hand side uh, and, and choose the type of filter and then that will lead you to the technical information on those items. Great. Thank you all for participating and we look forward to seeing you at our next hangout when we cover more essential air filtration topics. Thanks, Charlie. Much appreciated. Thank you, Thank you very much. My pleasure.